Salford. British champion Paul McHugh here. And uh, he is in front. Behind him, Paulding of Wales. But uh, Paulding trying to pull up on the outside. But McHugh will get there. Led from out in front. And the man who could yet be the biggest danger to Gary Newan goes through in 11.54. He was disappointing. The... If you're in front with the fellow is in blue, you have to look back over your shoulder all the time. And that's a disadvantage. So he swings down. So now we can look back up into them. Steele is the New Zealander on the back is playing a waiting game. I imagine he will take off and try and catch Niwant in third position. The winner here goes into the last four. Then we get down to a man against man. This is a three up. Okay, the Scotsman Bryden leads. Steele there in second place. Still watching for Niwant. He has terrific acceleration and top speed. They get the bell, 2.50 to go. Niwant in a position to pounce. Pounce he does. Round to the outside. Easy for Gary Niwant. Half a lap from home. Put down the glasses. And Gary Niwant goes through into the quarterfinals. How good was he there? Gary Niwan in scintillating. The silver medalist at the Olympics in Los Angeles in 84 in the time trial and finished only sixth in that event at the Commonwealth Games last night. Needs this one to make amends. In the meantime, Paulding, the Welshman, dives underneath. They approach the bell. You've got to go pretty early on this track. Harnett in a good position, but maybe not close enough. Now he's getting up in the slipstream. Paulding leading out. Harnett has ridden a beautiful race. He's waiting for the Kiwi to get on the hip. And now in the... The Canadian is heading for home, and so Harnett goes into the next round. Beautiful ride, and he goes into the quarterfinals. Alexander of Scotland. Alexander, pretty impressive earlier on in winning in the first round. So Rooney from the Isle of Man dives early. He's gone very early. Now, this is pretty tough for McHugh, because he has to lead out Eddie Alexander, the Scottish lad. And Alexander is perched right on there, and it's going to be hard as they come up for the bell. McHugh does the right thing, goes straight around, but he could have gone too early, and Alexander has got to sit on him up the front straight. Bit of trouble here for Paul McHugh, who went in looking like being a finalist. Alexander goes round the outside of him, and McHugh is gone. Alexander thrashes him. That is a turn-up. McHugh, one of the favourites, and... Tactics boot against Murray Steele of New Zealand. And Steele's gone to uh, try and jump him a long way from home. Well, can he keep this up? Paul McHugh with a reputation of having one of the fastest final sprints in cycling. But he hasn't displayed it so far. And he's had to come through a ripper charge to this stage. And Paul McHugh a long way back. OK, I think Steele will back off. Steele swings up. He should try and put McHugh to the front now. Because after he's given him a lung buster, he's going to give him another lung buster. That's what it's all about. They know McHugh is a little bit off form, and the Kiwis are tough riders, and they should put him to the front. That's, that's allowable. That's good tactics with one lap to go. Oh, he's knocked him down. He must let him through. Steele takes him up, and now he jumps away from him. Now we'll see how good McHugh is. He's got a big reputation. Gee, this has been a ripper. Will they make it to the line? Oh, I think Steele's weakening. McHugh comes down the outside and does him easily at the end. Well, was it easy? I reckon there are a few moments of a heart flutter there for... Uh... The races are just about underway in this sort of race. Cat and mouse tactics for the first 700 metres. And in the last two or 300, they really get underway. But Niwan is giving Norton, the Welshman, plenty of distance. But watch his speed down that back straight. He's just about to unleash it. And Niwan draws up level. He hasn't given himself a great margin, but really he's only in about second gear. And he goes up to the line and wins it very easily. So Gary Niwan... In this two out of three race quarter final, McRedman has got everything against him. He's still trying to get to the front. Niwan came right down on the top of him and forced him down onto the uh, blue strip, the bottom of the track. They get the bell. Niwan's giving him about three lengths. But look at the acceleration of the Australian champion. It's all over. Down the back straight. McRedman, no hope. And Niwan just puts a big gap in him and surges to the line. An easy winner and an 11.39 final 200 metres for Gary Niwan. That's the speed down the back straight. If anybody can hold... ...knows if Ongaro goes around the top, he's got him covered. He can take him up to the fence and slightly intimidate him. Good tactics by the Scot. Ongaro goes for height and Bryden's underway, but Ongaro's too much speed down the back straight. 
Lefty, once he leapt out of the saddle and really put on the power, he ripped that power into the pedals and look at Alex Ongaro easing up to hit the finish line. 11.55, his final sprint. A bit slower than Gary Neewan. Top seeds. He's controlling it from the front. He's got no speed on it all. They're coming up to get the bell, 250 metres to go. He's slowed it right down here for the accelerate. Down the back straight. Harnett right on the back wheel. And Harnett's got some chance from there. He's got the slipstream, but uh, I think he's left it a bit late. There's not much room after you come out of the bend up to the finish line. Harnett gets level. Ooh, he got there. Yes. Harnett right on the wall. Alexander, room underneath if he wants to go under. And there's plenty of room for Eddie to go under there. But Willie goes down and takes the center of the track. So now Alexander has to go around the outside, which he does. And he's underway at the 200 meter mark. He's got some speed to stop as he whizzes down that back straight with Rastic chasing. No chance for Rastic. And Alexander has been most impressive in his sprint series. And he's won that easily. 11.17, his final sprint, which is the fastest sprint. He might be trying to force Gary to the front because in the first heat, Gary came to the back. McRedman shouldn't be on that blue area. He should be on the track surface itself. He can't, well, he, oh. can't get on. No. Well, it's all over now. Gary is, he's just tactically too good. And Gary's going to lead. This will be the first time we'll see how he goes from the front. Gary goes down the bottom of the track, but he's, you see that acceleration. He left McRedman by 10 metres. He's stalling, he's not underway yet. Neewon is waiting for him, looking at him under the seat, waiting for him, and here comes McRedman. McRedman getting to him, but it's another thing to get round him. And Neewon into the home straight. McRedman, I think a little shake of the head then. He was beaten pointless by the Australian champion who qualifies for the semi-final. Tactics here, high on top of the track, plenty of speed, Bryden's winding up, he faked to go underneath. Ongaro goes down to the bottom of the track, back up, stalling. And now he should jump away. Yes, he jumps away, and it's all over because Bryden couldn't take the snap. Ongaro still out of the seat. He sits down, Bryden chasing. And Alex Ongaro going further away. So Canada represented in the semi-finals. Alex Ongaro straight heating, Stuart Bryden and Scotland. Bit of speed on Kurt Harnett. He's got the head like an, an ostrich. McHugh goes underneath. Kurt Harnett looked the wrong way. Now McHugh's got some, finally got some speed on, and he's setting out at the 200 metre mark, and now we'll see what McHugh's got. If he's got anything, but Harnett is coming at him. Harnett coming back. Doesn't get to him by the bend, though. I think it's too late. He can't get level with him, and so McHugh has a victory over Harnett, and levels that quarter-final at one heat each, and they'll have a ride-off. Receive the bell. Eddie Alexander could go underneath here and come back up into a restrict. But Rastrick closes the door. Alexander's content to sit at the back. Rastrick has got more speed on the first heat. And now Eddie Alexander is going to have to go around the outside, which he really zooms down the back straight. And he's looking good at the moment. Oh, he looks magnificent. Eddie Alexander, the hometown boy, well, from way up north. But by G, he's gone into the semi-finals. Straight heating, Bill Rastrick for New Zealand. 11.38. McHugh. Slow him right down, then he can use his power down the back straight. But nobody has really showed their hand at the moment. Kurt Harnan's got plenty of speed on around the bottom of that track, down on the bottom. So McHugh has to go around the outside if he's going to get to the front. And they're coming around to receive the bell. And Harnett is winding it up. He's really winding it up. And Harnett is going for a long one. McHugh takes height. And McHugh's laying off. And now he's starting to go after Harnett, but has he given him too much start? Is it, we'll soon see. He did give him a very big break. McHugh pulls up to the outside. He's not going to get there. Yeah. Oh, yes, he did. Oh, didn't have much to spare. That's some of the speed that McHugh has. A great sprinter, and that, he's got plenty of cunning as they come up to the bell. The race is really on now. McHugh wants the front position, but Neewon just rides around in the outside. That's the speed that he's got to try and stop, and Neewon is heading for the line. Well, it was all over at the 200 metre mark. Did you see the way he went round the outside? And he just maintained it. McHugh could do little about it, and he's ridden 11.15. The second Scott to win, but uh, we won't know until they go over the, the line. Alexander's got plenty of speed on at the moment. He's not stalling. He's actually doing a time trial. Ongaro takes distance, comes back on the wheel. Alexander's going down the back straight, and Ongaro's caught on the hip now. 
can Alexander accelerate? Ongaro was beaten. He got caught beautifully on the hip. Beautiful by Eddie Alexander. He's still leaving the door open underneath there for Gary to go underneath and come back up and stall him. But Gary's quite happy to sit back at two or three lengths back. Now, Paul McHugh is putting a lot more pace on. He's actually doing a time trial. This is what he's got to do to try and stop Niwon blitzing him down the back straight. But Niwon pulls up level and goes past him with half a lap to go. McHugh tries to take him up the track a bit. There's a bit of headbutting and shouldering going on. Niwon looks across at him and uh, has something to say, but the main thing is he crosses the line first and Gary Niwon is... For this one, now it's Ongaro's chance to be at the front and uh, he doesn't have a lot of tactics, the Canadian. I think his best tactic would probably be just to ride a time trial, but... Eddie Alexander's got a heap of speed and he would like to get to the front. I'm positive of that. He bounces around the outside of Ongaro. Ongaro's got him, but is Alexander passed? He's not. Ongaro takes him high up on the track. Alexander hasn't got to him yet. And he's going to have to do it in the last rate, but Ongaro's strong at the front and gets there. Alex Ongaro levels it at one heat. That's for you to go up onto the top of the track. They all stay down on the on the bottom of the track. To uh, now, now they've gone up, so Hunnett Pass can come underneath. But there's usually plenty of tussles and thrills and spills. And this Bryden Scott goes underneath. Rastrick and Redden and two Kiwis are just about sandwich, sandwich. But it's but Redmond forces his way to the front at the 200 metre mark. He's got a break of about two lengths. Rastrick, the other New Zealander. Hunnett round the outside, perhaps the major danger. But McRedman holding his position, and Michael McRedman will take fifth place. Sixth for the other New Zealander. Out jump him at the start. Alexander winding up high on the track. McHugh drops down to halfway. There goes Eddie Alexander around the outside. McHugh tries to drive him in the fence. And it's a great race side by side down the back straight. McHugh goes up a bit high to about mid-track. This is going to be tough for Alexander around the outside all the way. McHugh still leads into the home straight. Alexander, has he got enough? McHugh gets there first. I think there could be a protest on that one. McHugh used the whole track, and speed is a real problem for any sprinter that Gary Niwon comes up against. Ongaro's got plenty of speed on. Niwon's out of the seat, winding it up. Plenty of distance, so he's not going to be balked or stalled as they come in the 200-metre mark. Ongaro is leading. But Niwon comes off the bank and still looks pretty easy as he goes up high once again and dives trying to go underneath. Now he'll have to come to the outside again. He's got the speed. Niwon gets up, beats him by a length. Well, he had about five options and still didn't. Trying to get that medal from Niwon and I can't advise anything from here because Niwon is just brilliantly fast with one and a half laps to go. He's covering Ongaro so he can't take a long sprint. He's still high on the track. Ongaro can go underneath quite easily. And here he goes. He's going for a long one. And now we'll see how good Gary Niwon is. Ongaro's got a big break on him. As they go through with a lap to go at the 200 metre mark, he leads by a long way. Big test for, for Gary Niwon here. He's coming back. Ongaro might be getting tired. Niwon storming home, but Ongaro's still there. Niwon gives it away. And Ongaro takes the first heat off Gary Keeping a very close eye on Ongaro. Will the Canadian make a move? Looks like he's leaving it to Niwon. Now Ongaro goes up the track, comes down on Niwon. Head down for Niwon. Not really going all out for it yet. Now he goes. Ongaro will have to catch him. Niwon, the five metre break. Ongaro up the track. Niwon looks to have it at this stage. Head down, Gary Niwon gets it. Goal to Australia, Gary Niwon wins the interview. For uh, Eddie Alexander to make some sort of move to try and get to the front, and it's just about to come now. Yes, he bounced underneath and went over the top with a, a fake. And he's around, oh, he hit him on the elbow, and Eddie Alexander is in the front, and that is the favoured position at the moment. And he's underway, he is flat out, Alexander, over the 200 metre mark, but here comes Ongaro. And Alexander went very early at about a lap and a half out. Ongaro in a good position to swing round him, but he's not going to get quite level. Alexander, but Ongaro got there. Gee whiz, just as well for Alex Ongaro that they lengthen the straights a little bit. For the... A close, not over his title, and 